rolling? Yep, it's rolling. All right, we're at Timeless Art 3 finishing in Grand Rapids, Michigan. 616-453-8309. You can find us on the web at www.timelessartgr.com. That's in Grand Rapids, Michigan, of course. Um, <coughs> You've probably seen uh, two videos on this already. Part one, Kendall, these are twin Kendall High Boys. They came out of Elkhart, Indiana. They were originally in a, in a wood grain finish. The customer wants to have them done in a tortoise finish like this. Um, he wants a pair of matching ones. And I work for Kendall Furniture and I don't think they've ever done uh, uh, toward one of these high boys in a tortoise finish. Yeah, they might have, but I highly doubt it. This is going to be a one of a kind, probably in the entire world. This guy, Jared, you're going to have a pride possession here to hang on to for life. <laughs> I wish that they were ours, mine and Sandy's. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm uh, Bruce Latch here in Grand Rapids, owner of Timeless Arts Refinishing, and I'm the finisher down here. Uh, Sandy Cuspit is my lovely better half. She uh, is a furniture decorator. She worked for Kendall Bakers and Sly. Sandy will be doing all the oriental decorating uh, like this on here. I'm going to be putting on the tortoise finish. So, and this is just going to be a short preview of what we do here. Yeah, you can keep everything right up there. So as right now, I'm just kind of trying to tie these couples in a little bit more. I know it probably looks real easy when you guys see me doing my YouTube videos on the web, thinking, oh wow, that can't be that hard to do. But it takes years of doing stuff like this to develop it to where you make it look so simple. Um, like I said, I'm 56 years old. I used to work for Kendall's and Baker's and John Whitcomb's Furniture Company. This is an art here. Um, if you've never worked in a furniture factory before in your life and you're trying to play refinisher, um, you might want to go back to getting a job in the company to learn a little bit. <clears throat> That'd be beautiful, ain't it? Mm-hmm. How's it looking back there, Sandy? It looks nice. It looks really beautiful. What do you think, Jared? How's that look to you? <laughs> I know you don't really think it looks like much right now, but you gotta wait until I finish my magic here. Looks real nice. This has just been a very enjoying job here to work on something like this. They're going to be beautiful.
Yeah. When I was just a kid, I was back, I was 19 years old, when I first got my job at Kendall Furniture. I was going to be a tool and dies man. They only paid, uh, it was like three ninety an hour to be a tool and dies man back in the day. And uh, you had to buy your own tools and micrometers and all that. So I got a job at Kendall Furniture. Um, I think I was making four four ninety an hour to start. I didn't have to buy any tools. Um, and I always used to work on these things back then. They were beautiful back then, and it's really a pleasure to have a couple of these in my shop here in Grand Rapids uh, for refinishing. How's that looking back there? It's looking beautiful. What do you think, Jerry? Does that look good? <laughs> I know when you see the video, you're going to call us up and talk to us. I think that looks pretty good right there. Mm -hmm. huh? Yep. Now, this is just the first step on this. Uh, I mean, first the cases were painted black. What do you have to do to it next? Um, after I'm done padding these to where I like them, I am going to uh, shoot them with a 30 sheet nitrocellulose lacquer. And then I am going to repad these with some red. Over here I got my little tray mixed up with my gold and my uh, solution that I'm using here. Yeah, it's definitely not no shabby sheet going on here. <laughs> or no chalk paint. This is good old American uh, historic refinishing work, what we're doing here. Unfortunately, uh, our world is dying in art of fine furniture. So many of us are converting to buying our art van furniture now. And value city furniture. All the imported stuff they can throw away after you have it for a couple of years because it's uh, falling apart. So you got a piece like this, an old candle piece like we're seeing here, these things will last a lifetime. One of these are dated 1983 and that's actually the older one of the two, but uh, we had another flat top high boy in here from the same customer that we restored before we were doing videos, I wish we would have done a video of that. It was just an absolutely gorgeous piece, and that thing was about a hundred years old. That's looking nice, ain't it? Yep, it looks really nice. I just love doing this kind of work. Um, so once again, thanks Jared and Grant for bringing this stuff down here. Um, it's almost an enjoyment to be working on something like this. Everything we do down here is, is very, uh, it's fun and it's a uh, unique, very unique. It's uh, always a good time working on it. Yesterday I did a old 18th century uh, rocking chair made in Chicago. And I had a blast doing that. Um, when you get on something like this and your first job was Kendall Furniture, and it's just such a gorgeous piece. That looks good too, don't you think? Yep, it does. Oh yeah. A little going on in there. Right here. Now 
Ah, these are going to be gorgeous. <laughs> now, there's lots of ways of doing it before it is finished. And um, usually, you would spray this piece gold first, and you'd have it laid down on its side. You'd be using materials that uh, crawl against each other, turpentine and mineral spirit. Uh, as you put the two together, they like to crawl away from each other. And you can really get a real unique look on something. And that's easier done on a flat piece than what it is on a piece like this. But that's the way I was actually taught to do a tortoise finish. Of course, I'm always self-taught doing everything. But, um, the bottom line is the end result of this. And when these pieces came down to us, we had a really nice old furniture book. And uh, this is what the man said he wanted it to look like. And uh, he left his book with us and I did a sample for him. And um, this is the way I came up with doing that sample. And uh, it's really all about what it's going to look like at the very end as much as that's not the proper way of doing it or whatever, you know. We're at 12 minutes, Bruce. That's okay, we can run them longer because we got the YouTube account now. Timeless art. No, I don't, no, I don't know anything about anything like that. Try Christian Brothers' uh, uh, piano service, okay? Thank you. Yeah, well, we're just waiting for some phone calls out here for business, and all I end up getting is somebody calling me up the other day, said he found some iron in his, uh, in his yard. Do I restore irons? This guy here, he just wanted to know if, uh, if I take old pianos, <sighs> how's he looking? All right. It looks nice. Are you gonna put some other colors in there? I am, but I'm gonna. You just have to spray it first, and then. Yeah, oh. it's best to spray it, you know. Mm -hmm. That way your colors don't muck up and, you know, like when you're doing one of your oil paintings. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that's it. Um, I'm going to spray these two things here and then they're going to dry. And then I'm going to come back with another video on this. As I'm going to go across, I'm going to use a... <coughs> excuse me, I'm going to use an oil paint here. Indian Red oil paint. That'll be my next step on this. So, thank you, and we'll see you next time. Time was <laughs> our three finishing, Grand Rapids, Michigan. <laughs> Very good, BJ.